Next question is from Yamasan. How to get over the fear of failing when wanting to become an entrepreneur? Oh Ooh. gosh. Yeah, you know yeah. what? You gotta you gotta Jump. make you gotta be okay <laughs> with failing. That's you right. actually have to make peace with it. Yeah. It's a true it's a true look, I'll tell you guys I'll tell Failure a story. reps. I'll tell a story to the audience that this this was one of the key moments when I knew that I had chosen to work with the right partners uh, with this particular business, Mind Pump. When we start, a lot of people don't know this. We've told this on older episodes, but when we started this podcast, we had a a fifth founder. So what we have now is myself, Doug, Adam, and Justin. There's four of us. There was a fifth early on. It's our good friend, Craig Caperso. And in the beginning, Craig had all the he had all the social media authority. He had all the audience. I mean, Adam had a small presence on Instagram, but really Craig had most of the audience. And so the way we were going to get our start was with Craig was a great way to introduce us to a certain amount of people so that we could grow. And we all knew this and he had other values, but this was, you know, a big thing. This was a big deal. And without that start, anybody who starts a business especially through social media or new media knows how hard it could be to get that initial foothold. So that's how we started. Well, anyway, we recorded like 15 episodes. We had put in a lot of work. This was early on. So for us, this was a big deal. Like now we can record a podcast, no big deal. But back then it was like, we all had jobs. We had to meet together at night. We'd record three episodes in a row and we, you know, we weren't good at it. So it was a big deal. So we did like 15 episodes, was like months of work that we put together and we're ready to launch this thing. And Craig, last minute, one of his sponsors listened to some of the episodes. And early on, we were pretty, you know, rough and and a bit raw. And they said, "Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think you should be associated with this. It's a little controversial." And so he told us last minute, "Sorry, guys, we can't release the episodes. I don't want to do it." And this was like a crushing blow. Imagine our foothold, our initial introduction was going to be this person with the social media following. The rest of us combined had like nothing almost nothing. So it's like, what are we going to do? And I remember specifically, I was okay with that. Fine. We're going to move forward anyway. And I literally thought I was going to have to get on the phone and motivate my other partners. I was prepared to get on the phone and do a speech and be like, that's it guys. We're gonna... Before I could open my mouth, everybody else started their own speech about why we're going to do this anyway. And that's when I realized I was working with the right people. And what did it boil down to? We all had made, we'd all made peace with the, with failing. Like we, okay, if we fail, so what? We're going to try anyway. So that's the key. The key isn't to ensure that you won't fail. That's part of it. The key is to be okay with the fact that you're going to fail. And guess what? You probably will the first few times oh, that you, you try. You count on it. And you got to be, it's like, it's like not being okay getting punched in the face if you're going to get in a boxing match. Right. That's impossible. You have to be okay with getting punched in the face because that's part of boxing and part of business is failing so you got to be okay with it your uh, uh patrick bet david has a, a really good book uh called your next five moves i really like it and he's using the metaphor a- around um uh, uh what do they call grandmasters the the uh, chess players chess player. oh, yeah. grandmasters yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what they call them or whatever and i and i think it's uh i think that some of the the greatest in the world can see like 20 something plays ahead which mm-hmm. is crazy to think about that because seeing 20 plays ahead means that you're not only thinking about their possible move, but the move that you will do in response to that move. And then- Bro, what, it's if insane. They, yeah, that's, so it's crazy. That's What's what, that series on Netflix? Uh, Queen's Gambit? Queen's yeah, Gambit. yeah. Yeah, they kind of show that a little Yeah, bit. and so it, it just, it highlights the, the brilliance of, of being able to do that. Now his book is called The Next Five Moves because he's talking about, he, he relates that to business and why that's so important to be able to, many people can't see five moves later. And it's so important and part and so it, to piggyback off of what you're saying is part of what making peace with failing isn't just being like, OK, I'm OK with failing. Because sometimes people hear that and they're like, OK, well, that's it. You just yeah. just decide it's OK to yeah, fail. I tried and I guess not. Yeah, that's go away. The, yeah. that's that's only, that's only one part of it. The, the part of making peace with failing is accepting what does it look like if we fail and then what your next move is in mm-hmm. response to that failing. And then let's say you do that move and then that one fails. What's your next response to that? And say you do that move and that one fails. And then what's your next response yeah. to that? Mm-hmm. So you're able to see four or five moves out that all could possibly go the opposite way of what you want them to. And how would you respond in that situation? And so, and then you make peace with that, that, okay, here's what I want to do. Now there's a good chance X, Y, and Z might happen. If that happens, then what is the next move for me to do? Okay, well then I'm going to do this. Okay. Let's say I do that. 
then what happens when that fails? Okay, well then, and if you can see out five moves and four of those moves basically being failure, there's a very good chance that you're going to get it by the fifth time yeah. and it's going to work itself out. And really, uh, a lot of the success that we, I mean, before I even met uh, these guys or we decided to do Mind Pump, I had this kind of vision around uh, building a business. In fact, I had another partner, Paulo, who was going to be the guy who wrote because we all know that I can't write, right? So he was. The, the he was the, the silver tongue kind of what I'd say Sal is in in our group now and has the ability to write really well and I had this vision of you know writing these blogs that had all this value and then I'd get advertisers so I had this vision for a business that uh, is nothing what we're doing now but it's mold what we're done now is molded kind of from that idea mm -hmm. and a lot of the things that we all thought we would be doing when we first started this. Is, does not look exactly the same way when we all sat mm -hmm. in that room the first time. We just we had an idea, we had a vision, we knew that we could add tremendous value, and we weren't afraid if that that way didn't work because then we would do this, and if that didn't work out, then we would do that. And everybody was excited about attempting to do that and not afraid of the potential failure. Well, a couple things you know to kind of you know piggyback off of that, um, like most of it. Uh, you know, in, in the time of, of doing all this is it, you realize that I started to turn those failures and the language of failure into education. And, and we've talked about this as being somewhat of an expensive education that you, you learn through all of this. I'm taking, you know, this potential failure. I'm, I'm thinking about my next move, but what did I learn from that? Like, what are all those lessons within that, that now I can apply going forward and change and adjust so I don't make, I don't repeat, uh, you know, those same mistakes. Uh, the other part of it is like, as you have this grand vision for where you want to go and uh, where you want to take uh, whatever idea or whatever it is that you want to do with it, you have to understand it's not going to be the same thing. Yeah. And, and to really just, just, uh, you know, be comfortable with that, be flexible with that and know that the only way for it to keep moving forward is to, to, you know, sort of flow with it and, and to be able to be open to changing, adjusting and uh, getting the feedback and, 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 you know, moving and altering from those potential failures, or you get so many of those in front of you, they become reps. So you can anticipate your moves, you know, extend out further. So now you anticipate those failures and you adjust before they happen. Well, yeah. that's the real silver lining in, in the failure thing. I remember when I was like 20, I read this article that said that like the average billionaire uh, failed like nine times before they were successful. The 10th time was the success. And I remember reading that art article and like my instant motivation from that was I needed to hurry up and go fail 10 times. Yeah. That was like, it was like, oh my God, like how many people I'm, stop after the fifth one? Right. Think about that you know, and so, and I remember thinking that like, man, if that's the average billionaire and I, and at that point in my life, I don't know if I had aspirations to really truly be a billionaire, but of course I was going to shoot for the stars, land on the moon type of deal. Right. So it was like, okay, if this is what billionaires have to do to become successful. And here I am at 20 years old, I've only attempted maybe one or two businesses by that time. I'm going, oh my God, well, I just got to keep trying these things that I believe in. And I need to get to that 10 because hopefully by the time I, on my way to 10, hopefully I'll land one of them. Yeah. And maybe if that's the average billionaire who's way smarter than me, maybe I'll have to do 20. So in my mind, I'm going to try and get to 20 failures and hopefully along the way of 20 failures, I'm going to learn all these lessons that you're talking about and I'll be able to piece something together where I'll find success. Yeah. I think, you know, a big part of it too is just self-belief, like knowing that no matter what happens, you're going to figure it out. Like, I know I'm going to be yeah. okay. No matter what happens to whatever I'm doing, or no matter how bad it fails, I'm going to be able to figure out a way to take care of myself and my family, get back on my feet, and then try again. Now, imagine the confidence when you work with partners that feel that same way, right? Like, I know no, something happens. We'll figure it out, and we'll we'll take the next steps that are necessary. And that's that's part, for me at least, that's part of what makes me not afraid of failing because if something fails, I have self-belief knowing that, well, if that doesn't work, I know I can do something else. I'm not going to be frozen and screwed totally or completely. I mean, I had a client that one time I, I asked him that question. I was eight, I was young. I was 18 or 19. And I asked him, what's the one, what's the one piece of advice that you could give me, you know, for success? And he goes, you know, you're asking me the wrong thing. And I said, what? And he goes, ask me how many times I've failed. I said, well, okay. And by this time, this guy was a self-made millionaire. He came from nothing, like high school dropout, like long story. And so I said, all right, well, how many times have you failed? He goes, Sal, I've gone bankrupt several times. 
and he explains each of the times he's gone bankrupt trying to build a business. And he said, you know, it's you just got to swing the bat. You're going to miss, but then you'll hit, and then you'll hit a home run. So you have to believe in yourself and know that at some point it's going to work out for you. And it's you. It's more often than not, it's true. And even if you don't hit that big home run, you're probably you're probably better off than it had you not tried. Well, you're you're definitely better off, especially if you learn to reframe failures as growth opportunities, because that's where growth happens. Mm -hmm. Growth does not happen in success. When you succeed at something, it's, it's you not don't really learn a lot if it's right away. That's right. You, it's it's the failures where. The, so if you can become a person who is for, and I think you, Sal, alluded to this first was that. You know, being growth minded. If you are pursuing growth ultimately over all things, so maybe I have this business idea of mind pump I want to do, but ultimately I want to just continue growing as a human is my main goal. Like that's what's great is that even in, within a failure towards yeah. mind pump, I still s succeed at growing because mm -hmm. that failure is where growth happens. So if you can reframe the way you look at failures, you get more comfortable in that place. You know what's funny too about that, and I guarantee you guys the same way because we've been doing stuff like this for a long time. If you look back at momentary failures, I bet you can look back and say, gosh, I'm, I'm so happy that happened. Course. I'm so glad that that situation. We've had them within our own business, where mm -hmm. we've had we've worked with people and then had to not work with people, and it always has turned into something better later on. But I couldn't imagine if we got frozen in the in the failure of it, uh, how we would have never reaped the benefits that could occur from you know failure like that. So that's a big one. It's not easy, by the way. I know it sounds like we're making it sound like it's super easy. It's not even easy for us. Uh, you know, talking about it's easy, but. It's still a challenge. Nobody likes to fail. I'm going to be honest with you. It's not like I'm sitting here saying, "No, it's failing's awesome." <laughs> I have way more fun winning. It, yeah, it sucks fun to win. and it's hard. This is all hindsight. But do I fear failing? I don't like it. I don't fear it. It's a big difference between yeah. the two. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.